Sometimes, when developers create and release video games, players are content with the content they've gotten, and will move on after they've played their fill of the game. This works well for games with a hardline story that goes conclusively from beginning to end, and don't have much room for other things. But, when a game is much more open-ended, focused on exploration with lots of potential, players begin to crave that little more. That's where modding comes in. Modding is the concept of adding to a video game's code to add brand new, player-created content into the game. Not all mods are happily received by the developers, however. Nintendo is a great example of a game development company that will often go after these fan-created projects as a violation of copyright, even if the modifications aren't sold for anything and are merely a labor of love. Terraria, on the other hand, has an entirely different story. Terraria is a sandbox action-adventure game published in 2011 by indie game company Relogic. As part of one of their major updates in recent years, Relogic worked together with the community to create Tmod Loader, an application that can load and run mods for Terraria, to allow community members to create and share content add-ons for the game, all entirely for free as long as you own the base game. One such mod is Starlight River, a mod developed by community members Scalar Vector one and their team, which is currently in early access but is showing immense promise. Terraria is, at its core, a relatively simple game. It is, without a doubt, a real challenge for new players, but anyone with basic experience will begin to see a steep difficulty drop as they find the basic tools that make the game's most difficult content rather easy. Mods for Terraria aren't innocent of this either. The game's main difficulty comes from boss fights, which are often essential to progression, as higher tier items and gear are locked behind many of these fights, either from a change in the world or the items that the bosses themselves drop. Starlight River is an entirely different story, however. Even with a mere two boss fights currently added into the mod, the atmosphere, mechanics, and settings of these fights make for some of the most enjoyable bosses Terraria has had to offer. Instead of the bosses being simply reliant on dodging and firing back as the fight progresses, mechanics are added to make the bosses a bit more involved, including using a dash mechanic unlocked in the mod to break crystals and continue the fight, or even requiring you to build in the moment to avoid an attack, which is almost completely unused in any other form of Terraria content. Additionally, bosses are given strict phases that bar you from attacking back, making brute force a much less powerful strategy. On top of that, the visuals in these boss fights are nothing short of stunning, from getting followed into its arena by the first boss to the fluid, incredibly detailed animations that practically make the vanilla content look amateurish. Starlight River's two bosses are an amazing and very fun experience. On top of boss fights, the game adds more additional content, including temples for you to explore with puzzle sections that add a bit more of an adventure feel and new items for you to play around with. The mod isn't flawless, however. Things can be a little overwhelming to anyone who's playing for the first time, especially for newer Terraria players, but the game does make an attempt at explaining the most important mechanics, something which can't always be said for other mods. The mod also gets a pass because it's in early access, with the developers of it having shipped it for the express purpose of playtesting and feedback. Overall, though, Starlight River is a mod for Terraria I'm going to be closely monitoring. It shows incredible promise, and it is something that I would recommend to anyone getting into the Terraria modding scene. This is David Vanessa with Spoke Online, signing off.